So, hi, Jessica. Could you briefly introduce yourself? Yeah. So, um, my name is Jessica. I have finished my uh, master's developmental cognitive neuroscience at the University of York over a year ago. So, basically, since then, I've been working as a primary school teacher of, or elementary school teacher uh, for gifted children. So, okay, yeah. really nice. Did you study something something else to become a teacher? Yeah, I did study uh, well, like the school for teachers. So, and I've also studied uh, developmental and educational sciences. So, that's my bachelor's. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So um, we will ask a couple of questions about uh, your work and how it is to teach um, gifted children. So can you tell me something more about your work? Um, how is it to work with gifted children and how is it different from teaching typically developing children? Uh, well, so my school only offers full-time gifted education. So we don't have any uh, special parts of the day that's focused on gifted education. It's just full time. So my whole class has been tested to have a high IQ. So um, what's basically the biggest difference from our regular classes is that they all have an individualized planning that focuses on their goals and the topics that they still need to learn. So it's very focused on their own planning. And that's just to keep them focused and entertained. <laughs> so it's very personalized. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. And many people might wonder, uh, these children are super smart, so why do they need all of this? Well, yeah, they are considered as smart, but um, I do believe they really need uh, the right guidance and help to uh, achieve their way because um, they don't get noticed that much if they are in a regular class well some do because they tend to act out and that kind of stuff if their um, topics are too easy for them or maybe they feel like they can't achieve it yet so they're gonna act out and uh, because of that they sometimes get ignored or get uh, sometimes teachers think they're actually not that smart because they okay. um they just don't do their stuff because it's too easy and that's just weird to understand that they're not making it because it's too easy but yeah. it's just no challenge for them so they are like well whatever <laughs> i don't have yeah. to do this so they tend to get lost in normal education definitely yeah yeah, yeah. and sometimes yeah. they don't get noticed like especially the girls <laughs> okay <laughs> And what happens if these children get lost and don't get the right education? Well, we have a lot of children that become like massive underachievers. So they don't even follow like the normal curve anymore. They're just below it. Um, we also have, and that's basically almost always the boys that tend to act out. So they become uh, more vocal, sometimes even aggressive, just because they don't understand and control their anger. So that's a uh, frustration. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what kind of problems do they usually run into? So you, you said already a couple of things, but are there also problems with uh, making friends or um, other types of problems? Sometimes um, we notice that a lot of times they don't get their peers as well because they just they think on another level and uh, sometimes it's even more mature and they just think two steps or three steps that like in front of their own peers so they're uh, yeah they don't normally yeah well they can get along definitely especially in sports but if they have a normal conversation they tend to uh, think quicker so it's kind of hard to communicate. So that's normally, yeah, a lot of people think that they have low social skills, but I just yeah. think they have different ones, maybe even like older ones. Yeah. So that's just, yeah, it's hard so for them. They have a difficult match with children of their own age. Yeah. 
Yeah, <laughs> I like you. <laughs> yeah, he wants to be in the video too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no, they, they, they just, they are on another level and that makes it hard to like compete within a normal class to make friends yeah. that best you. And I think in our class, they all, uh, they all are on a different level. So it's easier yeah. for them to make friends now. Okay, yeah. it is. Okay, yeah. And, um, how do these kids change? So a lot of these kids, they come to you. <laughs> and then um, do, they, do they kind of like bloom? Do they, do they get along better? Or, or what happens if they get the right care? Uh, well, uh, I do have a few kids that are really like completely and then the whole new world open for them because they finally yeah. got to do the stuff that they never were able to do so mm -hmm. um they feel understood and that's the biggest factor if they feel like they're welcome and they're mm -hmm. um we're open to listening to their idea, uh, ideas and they get the yeah. chance to prove themselves they really boom and sometimes okay. a lot of kids have to settle in because um uh, we suddenly give their then a lot of responsibility for their own work and they're like oh normally somebody told me what to do and they have to like set in for that they yeah. just have to uh, get used to it but it will okay. be fun and um is this type of schooling for all kids because i know that there's also uh, um, extra classes for instance or some people some kids skip classes um, and you teach just full-time gifted education. So there's lots of yep. classes and how do you know? There, there, how do you know what's right or? Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> okay. So uh, there are many, many uh, different ways of uh, like that. We call them plus, plus classes. It's like for the well, the kids that go a little bit quicker, they're a bit uh -huh. uh, easier learners. So mm -hmm. that, that is an option. You have uh, out of school classes that you have like uh, special things besides school. But I believe that our education is a really nice way of integrating your normal education and uh, the things that you that you want, like your own autonomy, your own planning, your that kind of stuff. So I believe in it, it's not always possible to have a full time gifted educational department. Yeah. But if it's possible, then I believe it's a really good way of helping these kids. Yeah. Okay. And um, if you see children in a class, what what would uh, in a, in a normal class? How would you recognize a, a gifted child? Well, they can literally be any child. They can be okay. the overachievers, the underachievers, the, the kids acting out, the kids that just fade away into the background. It can literally be any kid. Yeah, okay. so that, that's not easy. Because it's kind of hard to distinguish between uh, the children that are underachievers because they uh, have difficulties with learning or if the kids are uh, gifted. It's, it's quite hard to uh, right. distinguish between that. Yeah. Okay, and in, in home settings, is it easier to spot it at home for parents? Well, uh, we noticed that there are quite a few kids that have, uh, at our department, that have parents that show similar traits. So mm -hmm. uh, they recognized that and they were like, hmm, maybe you should pay attention to that. So that's helpful. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, if the kids are frustrated because of their, uh, well, they're not being challenged enough. You also see that at home in their acting out and their words against their parents. So that's mostly a, a sign too. Yeah, okay. Um, and um, we already talked a little bit about the misconception that those children that are gifted have low social skills. And you already told us that this is probably not the case. Um, are there any other misconceptions? Well, I believe that one of the biggest misconceptions of all is that a lot of people think uh, giftedness equals uh, educational success and yeah. that's definitely not the case. You really need, need the right guidance and help and somebody that gets you. So I, I think that's uh, an important one to tackle too. 
Yeah, okay. And um, is there already help at um, like gifted education for um, high school? Well, there is some, okay. but I believe in primary school, there's a bigger focus on that. But there yeah. are some schools, I know there's in, in Silver, there are two, two, two uh, secondary schools that uh, focus on uh, gifted children as well. And they have an extra curricular stuff and they focus on those kids, like as yeah. gifted kids. So there are some options, but I think it's quite limited still. Yeah, especially when you said they are acting out. I can imagine that when they hit puberty, <laughs> it mm -hmm. even get worse. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. And do yeah. you think that uh, universities should also have programs for gifted people? I think it can be helpful. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, what, what I said about uh, the primary school kids, that they... Uh, act out or they don't do their work at all i believe at the university you you have those kids as well those students yeah. so if there would be some help or guidance that they even have the option to just do it so yeah. i think that would be helpful yeah yeah and are there any specific things related to school that these kids have problems with is it keeping attention or is it um well I have uh, quite a few kids with a double diagnosis, so they have uh, autism or ADHD or ADD, and so yeah, <laughs> then attention is quite a big problem. <laughs> yeah. So um, and like uh, most of these kids are uh, quite sensitive to a lot of sounds or distractions, so mm -hmm. that's an important part too. So the highly sensitive kids are definitely a big part of them. Mm -hmm. um and they really want to be challenged so in another way than just like oh make make this extra difficult uh difficult exercise to just challenge them in a creative way then make them okay. think and don't chew the answers out for them so yeah <laughs> okay interesting and then the the big final question would you say that uh giftedness is, uh is really like a gift or is it more of a burden yeah yeah so <laughs> i think it's quite hard to just write it down as a gift or a burden because i believe mm -hmm. it definitely differs from situation um i have a few kids that get really frustrated when something doesn't when they don't succeed within minutes because the yeah. last time they did it so why not now so that that carries a whole different aspect of frustration with it. But mm -hmm. it also can be quite nice to just be an easy learner. But yeah. um, I believe your family is really important and like an important factor whether you experience it as a gift or a burden. Because um, if your family is supportive and gets you and tries to understand you at least, it's so much different when they're like, oh, don't be such a smart ass or something like yeah. that. So that's an important factor. So yeah, yeah. I, I think it can be both. <laughs> yeah, so it might be a burden if they don't get the right care. Yeah, no, definitely, yeah. <coughs> Good yeah. conclusion. So we, we can turn it into a gift. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we should. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, thank you very much for this interview and I, I bet that Everyone will think it's very useful. Uh, so thank you very much for your time. And uh, see you later. <laughs> okay. See you later. <laughs>